going to Toronto with me. the first day in Toronto and obviously we can't just go uber so we're gonna drive that one mm. sorry that was a weak slap that was a weak slap <laughs> actually yeah it does yeah. I can't really see anything because it's so dark in here right but when we get out well, we're gonna take it for a drive. We're hungry, we just woke up. Amazing. Okay. We just finished lunch at a, what is that called? Sunny morning. Spent 50 bucks on what? French toast and, how, how was it? It was okay. I mean, nothing special. We were just hungry, that's all. We're on our way to Niagara Falls, so it's gonna be a longer drive than usual. I didn't really research on what to expect with Niagara Falls, so I don't know. She doesn't know. Wait, do you know? No. No, so we don't know anything about Niagara Falls, so we're gonna go anyway. Okay, I honestly did not know where to, to actually walk to the falls, but Kayla found a neat little sign. And at first I was like, this looks like we're gonna get lured or something. Cause... <laughs> Are we supposed to... Are you telling me this is a hiking thing? Uh -oh. What? I'm worried that it is. You can't see it. I think this is the fourth waterfall together. Remember when we went to uh, Elbow something? El is that an Elbow Fall? Yeah. Banff. That's one. Banff or Waterton? That's like on our way to Banff? I don't remember that. And then, and then, and then for sure, yeah, for sure. That's a butt plug. That's a butt plug. Cannot. We drove an hour from our hotel to this, to see this. Expectations were, were they high? Actually, there's, there's a lot. A second part. Oh, I didn't know there was two. That's crazy. And a bridge. Look, three things. <laughs> two it. falls and a bridge. I'm sorry. I mean, we could be down there if we actually wanted to. We spent an hour driving and we're just not that interested on the falls anymore. We want to be in the water, like drenched. Like I want to be floating in the water. Floating in the water. Kayla has a good idea. Maybe drowning. <laughs> just to be immersive in the experience. Literally. Literally. Now we're just sitting on a Starbucks. Classic. You can't go anywhere with us without a Starbucks. It's like... It's, it's like, like a, our thing. It's like a checkpoint. Yeah. <laughs> it is a checkpoint. Like, see? It's right there. But... <sighs> Let's head out, go back to Toronto, maybe party a little bit. Yes, like we don't actually enjoy this. It's an incline going back to the vehicle. We're not dressed appropriately. <laughs> ah! 
a Z, a yellow Z. Ah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm in a Lexus. So we basically spent three hours on the road today, and we only been into uh, Niagara Falls, which we spent like 15 minutes, 20, 30, I don't know. Uh, the highlight was we had to hike up, very, very tight incline. Now we're going to downtown Toronto. So Kale and I did this thing where we flew to Seattle just to see my chemical romance last year and I was like, you know what would be good? Renting a car that you would have never thought of like owning. And now in 2023 that we're in Toronto, I was like, you know what would be good? Do the same thing. So I rented this 2016 Lexus RC 350F Sport through Turo and I've been driving it for the last 24 hours and here are my thoughts. I honestly think that this is a gorgeous car from the inside and out. This one has a 3.5 liter V6 with 306 horsepower, which is somewhat the same as a 350Z. It's also equipped with an all-wheel drive system and with an 8-speed shiftable automatic transmission. My issue with this is that it there's not a whole lot of torque, but it's fast. It has the highway passing power you need, especially when it's in Sport S drive mode. Okay, let's talk about the exterior. Striking body lines, I love it. Little duck bill, cooling vent on the front, nice little F-Sport emblems paired with, you know, OEM 19 inch wheels. I'm a fan of huge looking grills and Lexus does it really well. There's not a whole lot to talk about the engine bay because it looks like this, very minimalistic. Cargo space, you can fit one Eric inside comfortably. So yeah, it's spacious. I'm not too sure if this is a standard, but this one has a fire extinguisher. So if it's not, thank you very much, Elson. It's my first time being in a Lexus, but I've been in a modern Audi. So this screams that. You've got your infotainment controls here with a touchpad. I love the tactile feel when I'm going through the menus. There are drive mode controls right over here. It has three modes, normal, sport as, and eco. Oh, and it has a digital gauge. Love it. You got your heated and cold seats, heated steering wheel buttons right over here. It has a voice activated navigation system with a data GPS display. And there's your push to start button, which is, in my opinion, placed a little too high. Okay, the center controls. For some odd reason, it has three different eras of tech. You have your analog clock, some 90s digital display for your HVAC system that you can control with these haptic buttons or sliders. And then you got a CD player. No hate, just a little too much. Don't get me wrong, they all work well. I absolutely love these map light controls. It's not a button, it's just a touch, so you can just glide it. Stunning leather wrapped steering wheel with symmetrical button positioning, paddle shifter for spirited driving, and you got your additional control and safety features right here. Comfortable leather seats, very well bolstered, but it could definitely need some lumbar support. Since this is a 2 plus 2, as usual, the back seat is cramped with the front seat 50% forward. As you can see, I can still wiggle. Wait, here are the things that I'm not a fan of. There's a huge bump right over here. It feels like behind this is the transmission. I mean, I can put my leg over and rest on it, but it kind of annoyed me a little bit. One more thing, you can't control both seat position and recline simultaneously. Overall thoughts, love it. The car looks great, handles great, has safety features, power is okay, just nothing to be crazy about, very comfortable, and I can see myself daily driving this. So if you're going to Toronto for shits and giggles, you know, you might want to consider hitting up Elson for his 2016 Lexus RC 350F Sport. I don't know. Last but not least, thank you very much, Elson, for letting me borrow your RC350 and taking a video of it. Appreciate it. 
So as usual, packing light, actually nothing at all because we were about to see Paramore live. Genesis Owusu, Block Party, Paramore, it was an amazing night. I absolutely love the set list. This time we were on floor access, so we had to stand for the entire night and I am very happy that I took an automatic car on this trip because I would have not been happy to use both of my feet driving back to our hotel. Home time, we actually managed to learn from our mistakes last time because we're now four hours early. We had not a lot of stuff to actually do in the airport, so good for us. That concludes the Toronto trip. I uh, hope you like any bit of that. So I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, folks.